You know paperweights? Yeah, well, I think they're a total friggin' scam. Says what it wants, but it's He's a man of conviction, but he's, but he's never been convicted. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show, Man of Conviction. This is my podcast. I'm Matthew Gossin, and I'm going to be your host. It's me talking to people in the entertainment realm, comedy, TV, film, behind the scenes, in front of the camera, kind of an insider's guide to the entertainment world. So my next guest is Carrie Scott. This is an actor who I met 38 years ago. We met at the Performing Arts School where I went in San Diego, SCPA, O'Farrell. He studied with the legendary acting coach Stella Adler. He has taught acting for over 20 years. He danced with Madonna in a Pepsi commercial. He broke two ribs shooting a scene in Freddy's Nightmares. And he got into a Canadian bar fight with Johnny Depp and Brad Pitt. Hollywood street cred, for sure. Kerry was nice enough to stop here on his way to teach an acting class, and I was glad to see his face. It's been a long time. So let's go to the interview with Kerry Scott. All right, we are here with Kerry Scott, and thank you for coming. Thanks for having me, man. It's great to see you. Great to see you. It's been many years since we've seen each other's faces, for yeah, sure. Many years. I feel like I see you all the time because of you know social media, but true. But truly, face to face, it's been a long it time. Has. Yeah. I've watched you go gray, and I'm sure you've <laughs> watched me go gray too. Right. We've grown gray together. <laughs> yes, yep. we have. Yep. We met back at SCPA at uh, the Performing Arts High School in San Diego. Yeah, the School of Creative and Performing Arts in San Diego. Yeah. What a great place that was. It was. It changed my life, that place. Me too. Yeah. Me too. It. Uh, I would not be doing what I'm doing today if it were not for the school, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I remember you were like right maybe 10th grade. Well, you were probably doing stuff before that, but like it seems like 9th or 10th grade, you were you would leave and be gone for a while and be like, where'd he go? Oh, he's doing a well, movie yeah. or something. Yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not, I know it seems earlier, but it was my senior year okay. that I started kind of disappearing just a little bit. Oh, okay. Um, I discovered, well, I discovered acting when I was much younger, but, you know, I started at 14 at, you know, at SCPA. Right. And, so that was ninth grade and, and then 10th grade and 11th grade. And finally in my senior year, I got my first agent and I started going on my first auditions and booked my first couple of jobs in my senior year at SCPA. Yeah. There was a, uh, I want to say Judge Reinhold? No. The, um, yeah, Judd Nelson. Judd Nelson. That's yeah, right. Judd that, Nelson. That, first, that first big movie was called Making the Grade. That's right. Yeah. And it was Judd Nelson. It was his first movie, sort of. He had done a half a movie. He had filmed half of a movie called Fandango with uh, uh, Kevin Costner. Uh huh. And they lost all their money. And so they stopped shooting. He shot uh, our film, Making the Grade. And then. After that film, he shot the other half of Fandango. Wow. So when we did that first film, Making the Grade, he had done a half a movie at that point. Yeah, it was my first film, my first real big film. It was a studio movie. It was MGM. Uh Uh-huh. And uh, we were in Memphis, Tennessee for a couple of months, and my first time away from home. Wow. Yeah, it was a great experience. I think I read somewhere that you danced with Madonna. I did. I did in 19... Uh, 89 maybe uh-huh. something like that uh, I did a Pepsi commercial with Madonna it was that big Pepsi commercial that got banned uh, we spent wow. a week shooting I danced with her I got to kiss her wow yeah oh wow it was really cool oh. I got to kiss her I danced with her for a week and then it aired one time and then it was taken off the air because she had released her video of Like a Prayer the same day the Pepsi commercial came out and the Like a Prayer video super was controversial super controversial so they had to, so they yanked it from the air. Wow. So all that, it was like a $12 million, $15 million commercial, something like that, aired one time. Wow, that yeah. seems wasteful. Yeah, very, <laughs> very. But it, it, my time with Madonna was awesome. I bet. Yeah. That's a great story to be able to pull out. Yeah. Man, seriously. Man. She was awesome. I mean, she to, to, for her to calm down and relax at the end of the day meant turning up music on the soundstage as loud as possible and dancing till two or three in the morning every night that's how she relaxed wow yeah 
So we all danced because the the sound stage so great. at the day, at the end of the day of filming, the sound stage turned into like this little mini nightclub. That's awesome. And all of us in the commercial, the crew and everybody, we would dance with Madonna till like three in the morning. No one wanted to leave because you're with Madonna. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's like you know maybe fifty people max there. You know. So we all just danced every single night till the middle of the night. It was crazy. That's great. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And you've managed to continue to work fairly regularly throughout your life haven't you yeah yeah i've pretty much made a living from acting for all these years i mean i teach an acting class too to be fair right i teach an acting class and that helps but um i worked about and this only came to my i had totally forgotten about this but i actually worked at a at a fitness gym like a club Uh it wasn't i can't remember the name of it but i worked there for about three weeks in the uh, uh, late 80s. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, about mid 80s. I worked there for about three weeks selling memberships, you know. Um, so that was my only kind of job in the real world, you know. Other than that, it's been teaching my acting classes and, and acting and, and uh, writing and directing. Tell me about your acting class. Uh, I opened the rehearsal room many years. It's called the rehearsal room. I opened it many, many years ago. Um, and uh, I, I taught it up here in Los Angeles for many years. Now it's down in San Diego. I have my own little theater in the gas lamp, which is really nice. That's awesome. The rehearsal room theater. And uh, it's just a little class, you know, but it's been going strong. It's been 30-something years. Do you do like a scene studies or do improv or... yeah it's it's all of that it's mm-hmm. scene study it's improv we do shakespeare we do monologues we do everything it's great um it's all based on stanislavski's method uh the, the method uh which i learned from my teacher stella adler right that's who right she learned from stanislavski himself wow yeah so you got to work with stella adler i was with stella for about six and a half years that's awesome yeah i was in the very last class she ever taught uh before she died wow um yeah, my classmates were like Mark Ruffalo and Billy Bob Thornton wow. and uh, Meg Ryan, who I was completely in love with. Uh-huh. How she's, could you not be? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, she's... Yeah. <laughs> I loved her. Loved her. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't just have a crush on her. I loved her. Wow. Um, and a lot of, you know, just really great, great, great actors. Uh, Benicio Del Toro was in my class. Wow. Salma Hayek. These wonderful actors. And... Uh, yeah, we were we were a pretty tight group for a long time. Yeah. That's so cool. I, yeah, I I read that <clears throat> today doing some research, and I was mm. like, wow, I didn't know that. That's very cool. Yeah, that's that's another great uh, yeah. name to drop right there. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I imagine in an interview we'll be dropping lots of names here. But, sure. But um, yeah, she was really special. I mean, you know, she studied under Stanislavski himself, and um, you know, her her closest friends were people like Tennessee Williams and Arthur Miller and, you know, people like that. Wow. So she was just this amazing force of nature. And the Stanislavski uh, method, or is, is it called the method act, right? Yeah, That's method the, acting. How does that differ between other methods? Yeah, or? it's, I mean, it, all it really is is getting to the truth. That's all that Stanislavski really wanted, was us to get closer to the truth. Prior to him, you know, actors were acting, they were emoting, and they were big, their facial expressions, and their body language were all very, very big. And Stanislavski said, I don't like this. I want to, when I go to the theater, because this is all pre-film, you know, when I go to the theater, I want to see something real. I want to be caught up in a story and believe what I'm watching. So he created a system to help us get closer to the truth so an audience would believe what they were watching. Um, and that's a lot, a lot of it was based on sense memory uh, and emotional recall things like that. Uh, and like you'll, a lot of times you'll see actors sort of maybe working themselves up on the set or like maybe not talking to the crew or maybe like talking in, in that accent that they're in. Yeah, yeah, because exactly. Because it, it helps you ground. Yeah, it. yeah, it's staying in character the entire time you're filming and never coming out. You know, some actors take it a little too far in my opinion, but um, but there's, um, you know, there's great stories about actors who, uh, um, you know, even just like Nick Nolte who played a homeless person in down and out in Beverly Hills. Right. So he didn't bathe, he didn't shave, he didn't, uh, you know, he didn't stay at his house in Malibu. He went and lived on the streets of Beverly Hills for weeks. Got arrested four times. Wow, I didn't uh, know that. Ate out of other movie stars' trash cans, you know, <laughs> and slept on the streets so he would know what it is to be a homeless person. And that's what the method is. It's living as your character. There was some story, I may be getting this wrong, 
Dustin Hoffman, Marathon Man. Yeah, that's a famous story. Right? And he yeah. said, try acting, my boy. It's yeah. easier or something like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> the story is that, that Dustin Hoffman, who's you know a very method actor, was working with Laurence Olivier, okay. who is a very classically trained actor, very opposite in the way that they work. And they were doing the film Marathon Man, a uh, great film. And you know, two opposite schools of acting coming together in this film and there's a scene where uh if you know the film Laurence Olivier plays this Nazi dentist called Zell and he's performing you know he's he's drilling into live teeth into Dustin Hoffman's teeth and keeps asking him the question is it safe is, is it, it safe? safe you know trying to get some information out of him and Dustin Hoffman in preparation for that role had not slept for several days had not eaten for several days went running every day he was a marathon man he's a marathon runner and he was running, and he were they were about to shoot this pivotal scene in the movie, and Dustin Hoffman collapsed. He's just out of sheer exhaustion and malnutrition, and he fell, you know, just fell over. And when he came to, Laurence Olivier was standing over him, saying, "Next time, why don't you try acting, boy?" <laughs> you, know, so you see how they clash, you know. It's just two different worlds, you know. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I think the method is probably easier. Well, at least because you. you you just have to now do it because you're you're already there. You know what I mean? You just have yeah. to fall into it instead yeah. of... Well, I think that all audiences expect that now. You know, they expect truth. They expect realism. Right. Um, so even a lot of the classically trained actors, the, you know, the English actors, the British actors, are adapting to it because they, they know that that's what audiences are, are you know, looking for. Right. Even uh, um, Anthony Hopkins, you know, was very classically trained. was a member of the, you know, the, the Royal Academy and, right. you know, did Shakespeare and all that. It says, hey, I'm, I'm as method as can be, you know. I wasn't trained in it, but I know that when I do my work, I'm a method actor. Because I'm going on the inside, trying to find the truth of right. every character I play. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> I think our, our mutual friend uh, Todd Peters read a book by somebody, and I think it was a, it was a professor at Irvine, and he used this analogy, and I thought it was kind of cool, and I think it's method related. <clears throat> Imagine you're on a ski slope, and you have this this slalom. You know, imagine you, you, the day before you get to go set up all of the slaloms in exactly the place that you know you can walk up and down the mountain with a flashlight mm -hmm. adjust those slaloms just right so that when it's time to perform all you have to do is fall because mm -hmm. you've already sort of set up where you're going to hurt and jerk around right, and it's right. I don't know. I thought that was an interesting right. analogy. It is. It is. I mean, there's a ton of preparation that goes into it, of course. The more, you know, it's like anything else. The more you put into it, the more you're going to get out of it. So you do a ton of, ton of preparation. But you also have to be open for one of those cones to, to, to shift right. or to slide and right. move out of the way. You have to be open for that. Right. And that's where, you know, of course, improv and things like that come into factor, right. you know. And, and things change day to day, too, you know. Because our moods change and so do our characters' moods. You know, they can't be consistent because we're not consistent. And because sometimes movies are shot out of sequence, uh, a certain arc might, you have to be really aware of where you are in the story so that you don't. Yeah, you're, absolutely. That's a, that's a, that seems would be hard. That would seem to be yeah. hard to do. I always create, um, I don't know, I call it an emotional timeline for my characters. So when I'm doing, when I'm lucky enough to have a large role in a film and I'm going to be gone for a month or two filming, then I can look at the entire film, right? And I can see where my emotional timeline is and see where I'm at, you know, emotionally, because I might shoot, you know, the beginning of the movie on the last day of the f shooting. So do you assign it numbers or like grades or something? Or it, it, uh, for me, it's, um, it's almost kind of color coded. Okay. I use different kind of pens and things okay. to kind of keep myself, you know. And then I create a chart. I have like charts and graphs and everything, you know, wow. to keep it consistent. Because it can look really weird, man. You know, if you have a really emotional scene and then the next shot in the film is you in a cab, you know, that later that night upset, but you shoot that scene later in the cab upset two months later, you gotta you gotta know where you are yep. in the film. Yeah. I remember uh, talking to you in the, in the front yard at, at O'Farrell at our at our campus, and you'd come back from Brazil, mm -hmm. and you, you and I was like, so here, say something to me in Portuguese, and 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 you did, <laughs> and uh, and I remember thinking, how cool is it that you can go to a place for a little while and learn yeah. another language yeah. and come back, yeah, and I I thinking about you doing that definitely led to me 
learning French. I went to did a semester in Paris, wow, and, I, really? and I did. Oh, that's some, so cool! I, and I've kind of become a, like a language geek in a way. Of, really? Yeah. Oh, that's so cool! I can't mm. believe you remember that. Yeah, I remember it very, very specifically. Wow! No yeah. kidding. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> Right on. Um, well, I wish I still spoke it. I know it, I, I it doesn't come up. You, nah. If you hear it, maybe would you be like a little bit? I, I can carry on a very minimal conversation with Brazilians. Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> very minimal, especially about food. Right. <laughs> <laughs> very yeah. cool. Do you have any interesting like the stories that you tell when you're out with some friends in San Diego and they're like, "Oh, you're an actor. Oh, that's cool. oh, what have you done?" And you know, a couple beers in, you might you might uh, <laughs> have a story. Uh, oh my gosh. You know, when people find out I'm an actor for that, I try to avoid letting bring anyone it up. know that. Yeah. It's kind of been a policy of mine uh, to not bring it up. But people are like, so what do you do? Yeah. It's, well, you know, I, if they ask me, I'll answer. Sure. You know, but I try not to get into a conversation. And what's so weird, what's so weird about people when they hear it the first time, they always go to the lowest denominator, if that makes sense. So the, if, if they don't know me and they ask me, oh, you're an actor. Mm-hmm. Uh, I say, yeah, I'm, I'm an actor, and they go, oh, oh, you, you like, uh, you do plays? Well, uh, yeah, but I haven't done a play in about twenty five years. I, I love theater, but it's been a long time. <clears throat> oh, so you like are an extra? No, I've never done extra work in my life. <laughs> um, so you, oh, well, then like commercials? Well, I also I haven't done commercials in about twenty five years, something like that, twenty twenty something years. Well, I don't understand. <laughs> well, what do you? What don't you understand? Well, how are you an actor? You don't do plays. You don't do commercials. You're not. Uh, you're not an extra. What then? What do you do? Well, I'm an actor. Well, I don't understand. They don't. They just can't wrap their head around that you can actually be on a television show or in a movie and speak words. Right. <laughs> they, it's, you know, and, and then they don't believe you, and you're like, ugh, ugh. you know. So it's it usually turns into like a very uncomfortable conversation for me. Wow. Yeah. Because they don't trust it, or they, you know, or and then again, they always just downgrade it. It's so weird, but that is weird. <laughs> I know. I don't know why. They just. I think people think that if you are an actor, you have to live in New York, or you have to live in Los Angeles, right. and you have to be famous. Right. And you it's know. so not the case. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You know, I don't live in New York. I lived in L.A. for many years, but I live in San Diego now. But I work up here all the time. I worked last week. You know, it's a it's a you know a two three hour drive, and you just have to yeah. leave a little early, and it's just yeah, a exactly. long commute. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh, there are other actors that live in San Diego. I'm sure. Yeah. You know, I just I drive a lot. I spend a lot of time here in Los Angeles, but I actually live in San Diego. And people don't accept it down there. It's very strange. But as far as stories, I don't know, man. How about one that I'll tell you? One. Yeah. I got okay. I got one. Okay. So I don't know why this one popped into my head. And there'll be more name dropping in this story, Please. of course. But um, I was in Vancouver, Washington. Uh-huh. Wait, no, Vancouver, Canada. Uh-huh. And um, I was working on the TV show Twenty One Jump Street. Right. And I, 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 I had a, a nice role in it. And um, you know, Johnny Depp was the biggest star on television at the time. You know, Fox was a new network, and it was a number one show. And 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 Johnny was a huge star. And then Brad Pitt was in the same episode with me mm-hmm. and brad pitt and i play kind of best friends in uh-huh. the episode so i'm spending a lot of time with brad and a lot of time with johnny and we're in a bar one night in vancouver and and it's brad johnny me and uh johnny's stand-in bruce i think so there was uh you know four or five of us and we're sitting at the bar and these lumberjack guys i mean we're in you know we're in vancouver canada and he's like you know these huge lumberjack guys come in and they're like hey Look at these actor guys, these pretty boy actor boys, you know. <laughs> it was like, it, you know, we were like, hey, man, no, we're not pretty boy actor boys. We're just some guys having a drink, you know. And they came in, and they went right up to Johnny, and they knew who Johnny was. And they grabbed Johnny, like picked him up, almost held him over his head. And Johnny's like, please don't punch me in the face, man. He's like, I got to work tomorrow. And so Bruce is standing, literally put his face in between Johnny and the guy and took one, took one for Johnny right in the face. And then all hell broke loose. And it was just this <laughs> massive, massive brawl. Wow. I got punched in the face. Brad Pitt got punched in the face. We all got punched in the face. And it, and it spilled out into the street. Oh, and I finally rolled my body underneath a car, a parked car, because I didn't want to get beat up anymore. So Good I, move. I Good move. I just disappeared. I kind of fell on the sidewalk and rolled. 
world, you know, and it was awful. We went to work the next morning. All of us had black eyes and oh, just man. scratched faces. And then it was in the news and it was on the newspaper. And, you know, the producers had to, you know, sit us down and talk to us and they got real mad and everything. We had tons of makeup because we were just covered in bruises. Anyway. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, there's a whole bunch of them. That's the first one that popped in my head. Wow. How about advice that you would give to, you know, a 17-year-old who's coming out of high school and is like, I'm going to, I think yeah. I'd like to maybe be an actor. And yeah. I mean, people have said I'm good and they, they clap really loud at my school plays and I'm, I'm going to go for it. Yeah. What would you say? Okay. Well, for that 17-year-old that wants to start out, um, there are a million uh, just like him that you know are really good and the star in all the high school plays and everyone thinks they're awesome and they should go to Los Angeles and be a star. They're not alone. So they may be very special, but they're not alone. And that's okay. They probably are very special, but there's a lot of them. So they have to be really smart. You cannot make it in this business being just good looking and charming. It's just not enough. And so many people think that it is. Oh, I'm good looking. I'm cool. I'm charming. I have some natural ability. I'll go and be a star. Well, there's a billion people ahead of in line ahead of you. So the first things that you need are you you need to work on that talent. Even if everyone says you're great, you got to get into a great acting class and stay in that class and study, study, study. It's like anything else. You know, uh, the baseball player who doesn't go to batting practice is not going to hit the ball in the game. You know, yep. if you don't practice your art, you're just, you have a lot of people that do, and they're going to be better than you. You got to work so, the muscle. You got to work that muscle. So the first things would be get into a great acting class and study your ass off. Study, 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 study. Um, and then you need some practical things. You need great headshots. You can't, uh, you need to spend money getting great headshots, have a nice resume, and then you've got to find good representation. Theater's different from film and television. I'm speaking from film and television. You need a great agent and ideally a manager as well someone who can get you in good rooms not a subpar agent you know not like joey's agent on friends you need right you know you need a really good agent that can get you in the room but if you get in that room you better be great because there's a lot of actors that are and so your competition is stiff so study 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 never stop studying and find good representation which is difficult but that's those are the first steps that's great that's yeah. good stuff yeah Tell me about your role as a director. You've done some recently. Yeah. There was a yeah. I've directed uh, two full-length feature films. Um, uh, one of which was released theatrically throughout the country, which was great. Um, and I've directed one television pilot that starred uh, Morgan Fairchild. Oh, cool! So two films and one TV show, one pilot. Uh, I have a whole bunch of films that I'm trying to get made now. Um, you know, but it's it's very difficult. You know, raising money. Um, so I'm in the process of raising money for like four different films right now. Oh, excellent. Yeah. I mean, and they range, you know, from millions and millions and millions down to, you know, 300 grand is even, you know, but even the small ones, the $300,000 ones are very hard to raise money for. Yeah. Just as hard as the ones that are millions, but I haven't shifted entirely from acting to directing, but I'm, I'm trying to direct more. Yeah. Um, I, I have some films I'm very excited about and the ones that I directed, I loved doing didn't turn out exactly the way I wanted them, the second one especially, but, you know, time and money. It's hard. And um, you're up here teaching an acting class. I am tonight, yeah. And you, uh, is that something people can sign up for? Uh, in, do you offer, how often do you offer it? Let's, how about that? Well, I, I often have a waiting list uh, to get into the class, and you also have to audition to get into the class. Um, but I do auditions twice a year. Uh, right around this time, actually, right around uh, late October, and then I'll do auditions again in like May. Uh, but and this is in San Diego. I do come up and do special classes in Los Angeles, but my regular class is in San Diego. So they just need to go to the website rehearsalroomacting.com. Okay. Rehearsalroomacting.com, and just uh, request an audition, and we'll set it up. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. And the audition's pretty simple. It's it's a short interview with me, and then we do a cold reading as well. And uh, if you pass the test, I'll put you in the class. Do you have um, some students that you're sort of excited about and you see a lot of potential? And... Uh, man, I've had students go on to have better careers than me. That's awesome. I mean, that have gone on and done way bigger things than what I've done, uh, which is awesome and infuriating at the same time. <laughs> totally. <laughs> you know? I mean, 
you know, people that come to my class and don't know anything, they don't even know you need a picture and a resume, you know, which is standard thing for every actor. And I teach them how to do all that. And then they go on and, you know, they're uh, multi gazillionaires, regulars on TV series, you know. Um, and I have a few right now that definitely have potential, but yeah, there's um, always, there's always someone. Yeah. Reminds me of, um, this writer I know, uh, on the tonight show, he taught, uh, groundlings classes and Jimmy Fallon was in his groundlings class and, and he's sort of, you know, yeah. we know where he is now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's, like, he's done mm. all right. He's like, mm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's always going to be someone, you know, I mean, I literally, I've had students that have gone on to be huge, you know, huge people. And you're like, wait a minute. I, I taught him everything he knows. <laughs> what, what, what about me, man? <laughs> you know, so, yeah. But I can't complain. It's been, it's been good. So, uh, your family involved in the business at all? Yeah. My aunt and my uncle uh, teach an acting school, actually, in uh, Orange County. Uh -huh. My mother teaches um, commercial and voiceovers as well in San Diego. Uh -huh. She actually uses my space, my theater, for uh, her commercial classes. Excellent. Um, um, yeah, I've always been around it my whole life. My mom was a performer always, you know, so um, I've been around it kind of my whole life, yeah. Very cool. And I, I, at a young age, but it was SCPA, it was our school that, that really kind of drove me forward. My first audition was for Pippin, and I didn't know that it was, would have probably been a good idea to do a Pippin tune. Yeah. I just, I went in like Ole Kittleson, our, our artistic director at the school. Yeah. His mother was on the piano. Yeah. And I said, Miss Patty. Yeah. Miss Patty, do yeah. you know, uh, do you know Revolution by the Beatles? <laughs> I, so I did it a cappella. Let, let's just say I didn't get uh, oh, I didn't wow. get in that show. Yeah. That's funny. My wife and I were just talking about Pippin last night. Yeah, because yeah, we're watching uh, we're watching uh, Fosse Verdon on uh, I don't know what's on Showtime or something. Mm -hmm. You know, and and he you know Bob Fosse did uh, did Pippin. So I was just telling her about that show last night. Love that show. Uh, Evan Handler. Was Evan Handler in it? Isn't oh oh yes, Fosse Verdon. He pay, he's playing he, one of them. He might be playing Patty Chayefsky. I'm not sure, but yeah, he is in it. Yeah, it's really good. It's really good. I Sam see. Rockwell and Michelle Williams. Very yeah. cool. Yeah, five time Oscar nominee. I'm yeah. I really want her for this film that I'm directing coming up. Oh yeah, yeah, she would be perfect. But you know, money, money, yeah. money, money. Oh man. Yeah. Sometimes art requires some sort of physical sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. You hurt yourself. Oh man! In the in the in the midst of uh, yep. making drama. Yep. Do you have I any have, stories? <laughs> oh man, let's see. Yeah, uh, several. Um, let's see. I did a film in Indiana called Diving In, and during one of our takes, I have to shut the door as I'm saying one of my lines. Shut a car door. When I'm saying one of my lines, and I shut my thumb in this car door on a take. And it's one of the funniest outtake videos you've ever seen in your life. I, I literally look into the lens. I didn't mean to, but I look right into the lens and scream. And the other actors behind me are like, what is, they're like, <laughs> you know, like, what is, why is Gary screaming his lines? It's, yeah, it wasn't screaming my lines, it was just screaming. Why is he screaming over our dialogue? And I opened the door. I figured out what I did. You know, I was in so much pain, I didn't even realize what happened. And I opened the door and I ran down the street, just ran down the street screaming. So I broke my thumb. And then, um, what else? On I was doing a movie, a Chuck Norris movie called Forest Warrior up in Washington State or Oregon. I think we were in Oregon at the time. And I fell, I fell out of my trailer. <laughs> I fell. It was raining and it was pouring wet. And I sli I slipped and fell out of my trailer and landed on my arm, broke my arm. Oh jeez. Um, on the TV, I did a, a show called A Nightmare on Elm Street, the, but it was the TV series of A Nightmare on Elm Street. And I have a fight scene with this guy, and he broke two of my ribs. Um, <laughs> it's, oh, God. Yeah, I mean, we're, you know, and this is all, you know, this was also on film. That was during a take. He just, and it's the take they use in the film, too, actually. And I, I, I mean, he cracked me in the ribs with his knee. And then, what else? I did a movie in Michigan a couple of years ago where I had to fight this guy who was like twice my size. And I'm 54 years old right now. I mean, I was like 52. It was just a couple of years ago. And this guy's like 25, and he's twice my size, and he's throwing me up against the wall. I'm like, why don't I have a stuntman? What is happening here? Oh. And I literally, I thought I had broken every bone in my body. And so uh, at the end of the day of shooting, I told my producers, I have to go to the hospital. I'm like, 
I have to go to the hospital. I, I, every bone in my body is broken. I really did. And so I went to the hospital, and they, uh, they x-rayed me from head to toe. And it was nothing. It was just, they were, they were like, no, you just got the crap kicked out of you. You're fine. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, I have been injured multiple times. <laughs> um, in the NBC building, in the lobby in Los yeah. Angeles, yeah. Uh, there's a, is there not a poster? Yeah, there's a giant, I mean, it's like, jeez, it's like 30 feet by 50 feet. I mean, it's massive of me being held in the arms of Yasmin Belief. From a movie we did called, what was that called? The Lake. The Lake, yes, The Lake. Uh, the Lake. I played myself and my clone in that movie. And my clone gets hit by a car, and Yasmin Belith comes and holds me, and it makes me feel much better. Wow. <laughs> but there's a poster of her holding me. I've got blood coming out of my mouth, and she's holding me. And it's and it's in the, in the lobby of the main building in NBC. It's massive. That's so cool. Yeah. I want them to give it to me, but they won't give it to me. <laughs> You've taken a picture of it, I'm sure. I didn't. I didn't. Oh. I, I know. I need to go back and take a picture. Yeah, I'm assuming do. it's still up, you know. Well, maybe it's not. It was a few years ago. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I did a little bit of research. Did you? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> did you not change your stage name early on? Do you want to talk about that? Sure. Yeah, my name, my real name is Carrie Fisher. My full name is Carrie Scott Fisher. When you knew me, I was Carrie Fisher. Right. And I did my first TV show, which was Archie Bunker's Place. Right. And that I did when I was still a senior at SCPA. Okay. And I and I so I I, I had, because of that I had to join the Screen Actors Guild. Right. That was the year that I joined eighty eighty two or eighty three, and I um it would have been eighty three, and I submitted my paperwork with Carrie Fisher. You know, this is my name. And they wrote me a letter back and basically said, Princess Leia already has your name. You can't have it. <laughs> right. You know? And in those days, you couldn't have the same name. Now you can. They just put a number after it, a Roman numeral after it. Oh. But in those days, you couldn't have the same name. Not even if it was spelled different. You just it, Even phonetically, it couldn't be the same name. Interesting. Yeah. But now they so, do and they just put... Now they do. Yeah, they just put Roman numerals after it. So they said, you have to change your name. So I was like, oh, what are this? but that's my name. So I just took off the Fisher and made my middle name Scott, my last name. And I've been Carrie Scott ever since. And I ended up doing a movie with Carrie Fisher. And I told her that story. And she glared at me, turned around, and walked away. <laughs> wow. And I was like, wow, I didn't say anything offensive. I just said, because I went up to her and I said, hey, you know, Carrie, I, I thought it would be a great icebreaker. I'm going to be course. working with this woman. You know? So I said, Carrie, it's just so nice to meet you. I'm a big fan. I'm so happy to be working on this movie with you. Funny story, you know, <laughs> my, my, my name is Carrie Fisher, and I actually had to change my name because, because you had it first. And, uh, and she just, like, she didn't say anything. She just looked at me and turned around. Like, whoa, okay. Eesh. <laughs> Maybe she thought you were mad about it. I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea. Well, Carrie, let me thank you very much for coming to Van Nuys. And, yeah, absolutely. Um, and talking with me. My pleasure. Uh, um, it was really great to see you again. Yeah, and, you too, um, buddy. Well, let's not wait, you know, 30 years for the next time. That sounds good. All right, my man. All right. All right, buddy. That was Carrie Scott actor writer director good friend thank you for being on my show next week my guest will be kira sultanovich she's a comic a mother and a badass she's been doing stand-up for many years and she has a showtime special to prove it an amazon one hour special called you did this to me a game show on netflix called win sanity another show on fox called punchline and the short-form talk show that takes place in a sauna, Let's Get Sweat, which I was able to cut for her and help her during the shoot. It was uh, an honor to work on that. Funny stuff. So check me out at manofconvictionpodcast.com, manofconvictionpod on Instagram. And if you want to hit me up with an email, that's manofconvictionpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for coming. Says what it wants, but it's so contradicted. When it comes to boxers, the briefs, he's a, he's a little bit conflicted. Walks the streets of the town, totally unrestricted. He's a man of conviction. <laughs>